on Sunday between the Dolphins and the Patriots. Teddy Bridgewater will. S- okay, so let's talk about. Okay, so let's talk about the football side of the game coming up on Sunday between the Dolphins and the Patriots. Teddy Bridgewater will start. Here's Mike McDaniel talking about the fact that Teddy will be back under center for the Miami Dolphins. I met with Teddy yesterday. I was, um, you know, exchanging ideas and, and talking through some stuff all the way till like 10, 15 last night. Um, there was his bedtime. Um, and so um, moving forward today and, you know, the whole team's approach is uh, Teddy Bridgewater is the starter. Who the hell goes to bed at 10.15? That's what I want to know. <laughs> 10.15 Eastern time? Are you kidding me? 10.15 Pacific is more like it for me, but uh, maybe that's why Teddy Bridgewater is a highly functioning athlete and, and I'm not. Now, Chris, we, we know that the Dolphins couldn't win a game when Tua wasn't playing. Do you have faith in Teddy with the season basically on the line now for the Dolphins in the final two weeks? I, I do have faith in Teddy. I mean, we know he's he's experienced. He's one of the better backups in football. Now, it's never easy to be thrown in this situation where it's like, I mean, you haven't played football really. And, and you know, his chance to play, he got hurt. So he didn't really get to, you know, work out any of the kinks in his game when he did get to take over for Tua. But, I mean, if you got one guy with experience and you feel comfortable in the situation, Teddy's certainly one of the guys that's at the top of the list. Now, we saw what he did against the Bengals. I mean, they moved the ball a little bit against the Bengals. He made some big throws down the field. So the, the offense can still be explosive and scary. I don't know if the RPO game and all that's going to be as good. That's where Tua really is. He's got a gift there for how quick he can get out of his hands. And, of course, he's got great experience doing that, you know, even back into college where it's still – probably a new thing to Teddy Bridgewater to a degree. He probably dabbled in it, but hasn't made it a mainstay of his, you know, repertoire like like a uh, Tua has. But this is still a dangerous football team with a ton of weapons, a guy that's played quarterback, and they're playing a team in New England that we know is good, but not great. And they got an offense up in New England that ain't that special to where you can go, wait, I don't need to make a ton of plays here. If I'm just smart, Get the ball here. Get the ball there. Our defense should be able to hang in there with Mac Jones and company and give them issues. Uh, I think they'll be just fine this week, and then we'll see about week 18. Repertoire. Repertoire. With a little flair at the end. You like that? It was accidental like... scholar to intentional scholar. <laughs> Very well done. Thank you. Very well done. Thank you. <laughs> somebody, got a, somebody got a word of the day calendar for Christmas, I think. <laughs> no, Maybe not me. Not me. Nobody be. in my family is even um, smart enough to get a word of the day calendar for me, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the Dolphins are clinging to the last spot. You know, one of the realities is, just because you add extra games doesn't mean that you push the excitement deeper into the season. You know, teams are going to lock up their spots. And there's really only two spots up for grabs in the AFC. The AFC South Championship, which is going to happen next weekend, quite possibly the last game of the year on NBC, because it's it's likely going to be win or go home for the Jaguars and the Titans. But you look at the Dolphins there at number seven. They have very, very little wiggle room. you got a cluster of seven and eight teams nipping at your heels one false move and you are out so this becomes critical for teddy bridgewater and this is the opportunity look i i, I still feel bad for him with that crazy knee injury from right. late august of 2016 that derailed what could have been a breakout year for the vikings who knows how he would have been and what he would have become if he didn't go through that knee injury but here's a here's a golden opportunity remember remember when they signed him and he did that kind of passive aggressive. The doors open for yeah, me to right. win the job. You know all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, here's your here's your chance. Right. Here's your, you you wanted to have a chance to play. Here's your chance to play with the season on the line and the postseason in front of you. If you can just hold on, if you can win this game, if you can hold on, beat the Jets week 18, win the next two games, and you're going to be in. Yes, I, it, it, it's 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 you know unfortunate what happened early in his career, but man, he's got a chance to. Yeah, be the quarterback of a team that, that can make noise. You know, even though they've lost four games, as we've discussed, you kind of go through it. Okay, the 49er game, they weren't outclassed. They weren't. And as we broke down in that game, if Tua was on in that game, you know, that was really one of his m- most inaccurate games as a quarterback this year. They could have won that game. Nonetheless, they could have put up like 500 yards of off, uh, de- uh, yeah, offense on, on the best defense in football. Okay, week two. The next week, they lose to the Chargers. Tough battle. They had a good game plan. They posed some issues. 
Man, did we both felt good after their loss in Buffalo? You went, man, they kind of outplayed Buffalo. It's just Josh Allen made some crazy plays to win the game for them. But the team, the better team on the field looked like the Dolphins that night. And then last weekend, I mean, come on. You know, that, that's the, I, they, play, they play the Packers 20 times. They beat them 19 times. I mean, that was a miracle the Packers won. They, it wasn't just two horseshoes. It was three horseshoes and a shamrock up their ass to win that one. That really was. So uh, this is where I go, man, Teddy, yeah, they win this one this week. They got, what, the Jets in week 18? The Dolphins would be, like, at the top of the list of teams I wouldn't want to see coming into town wild card weekend if I'm one of the teams that's hosting a game. Damn. Xavier Howard, crazy defense, puts pressure on you. Those guys on offense. So we'll see if Tua, I mean, uh, Teddy can can capitalize. Yeah, and that's something that between the Bills, Chiefs, and Bengals, one of those teams is going to be the two seed if the Dolphins end up being the seventh seed and will have to host the Miami Dolphins to commence the wild card round. All right, matchup draft for Week 17. Any and all of the matchups that catch your eyes, we get ready for the games to come. Chris, what do you have? Well, I'm going to go to the game of the weekend, and that is the bills Bengals Monday night. And specifically, what I am really excited to see is Joe Burrow versus McDermott and Leslie Frazier. All right, Burrow is – just an absolute assassin in the pocket. I mean, it's, it's, it's you, the Patriots tried to play every zone invented in the history of football in the first half last week. And it's just, he just picks it apart. He knows his pass rush isn't great. And he just finds a little hole and boom, boom, boom. The Buffalo loves to play zone defense. That's what they are. They don't really want to play man. And when you play man, you know what's going to happen. He's going deep to Chase or T. Higgins, and he did that. The second New England played man a few times last week, he attacked them like that. So the game plan they have to take some of these short passes in the zone away, I'm very excited to see what they do and what they come up with because it's a tough task stopping Burrow in this offense in, in that department. You know, in – in a, a vacuum, I would look at Panthers, Buccaneers, six and nine versus seven and eight, and say, "Who cares?" Well, we know what's on the line here because the NFC South is so down this year. I'm going to see the Panthers' rushing attack against the Buccaneers. Yeah, I like it, defense, Mike. Because they were spectacular against the Lions. Deontay Foreman and Chuba Hubbard both had over 100 yards, and Sam Darnold kind of quietly interchanged. 